The Great Northern Forest is one of the last wild places in the northeastern United States. This vast forest network links the hardwood forests of the U.S. to the boreal forests of Canada, the largest continuous forest east of the Mississippi. It serves as home and refuge to a great diversity of life, from bald eagles and osprey, moose and black bear, all the way down to a unique variety of amphibians and reptiles. The Orion Society has determined this area to be of vital importance, and it's particularly important to one dangerously imperiled species. So we're here in the uh, Northeast Kingdom in the heart of these great northern forests, and we're looking for the wood turtle, which is a globally uh, endangered species. And it's also a species that can be really hard to find. It can be really secretive um, and dispersed. So we've brought in a colleague, Mark Powell, and his partner, Gracie, who's a lab mix, and she specializes on using her nose to find these turtles. So we're gonna head out uh, into this great landscape with them and, and see if we can find some turtles. It's really an incredible experience being out in these wild places and, and looking for this animal. It's like finding you know, this, this needle in the haystack. Um, it's an animal that, that is, is really aware of its surroundings um, and, and you're trouncing through this landscape. Um, and these turtles are probably oftentimes detecting us much earlier and moving closer to clumps of grasses and, and out of our way. So, so it can be a real challenge to, to find these animals, but it's really important that we understand the status of turtle populations. If we have no idea of, of how their numbers are going up or, or down, their populations could decline right under our noses and we would never know. Hey, good job. Yeah, it's yeah. great after all this effort to be able to finally know, find a turtle I, I, of this we size. We covered a lot of ground to find this one turtle, and I know there must be more in here, but they're pretty spread out. Yeah, this is a great find. So it makes, yeah. a, makes a day in the swamp well worth it. Yeah, I'll say. That is a big, healthy girl, too. This is the wood turtle, an extremely rare and little-known inhabitant of the great northern forest. It's certainly not the biggest animal around reaching about five to nine inches long, fully grown, but it's one of the area's most iconic inhabitants. This charismatic species is known for the stunning orange coloration on its neck and legs, as well as the distinct pyramidal pattern etched onto its carapace. Well, for a reptile species, they're pretty darn smart, and there's something about wood turtles that they give you a look and you really see intelligence behind the look. Uh, the only other reptile that I get that feeling from is uh, a timber rattlesnake. You know, they're, they're a cut above the others. You look at a painted turtle and it just kind of looks back at you. But you look at a wood turtle and you wonder what's going through its mind. And I'm, I've just been amazed. I, I'm truly amazed by how they understand their landscape. I've found the same turtle hundreds of feet away from the stream in the same spot separated by a dozen years. They have a topographic map of my property in their little head. I mean, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Those wood turtles lucky enough to survive their youth are extremely long lived, reaching on average the age of 40, but capable of living up to 60 years in the wild. It takes 15 years before a female turtle is mature enough to lay eggs. As a consequence of low nest survival, it could take a female turtle laying eggs her whole life before she can replace herself in the breeding population. Well, the wood turtle is a fairly unique turtle in, in a number of ways. And uh, one way to, to highlight that is that it is this animal that connects both wetlands and uplands. Most turtles you think of 
oftentimes spend the majority of their time in whatever type of wetland they live in. But wood turtles, while they spend a great deal of time in these rivers um, that we're standing in now, they leave these rivers in the spring and spend a large amount of time in the upland areas foraging, sometimes going thousands of feet away from the river. So it's kind of a unique life history with an animal that will connect these wetland environments to these uplands. And you know, in saying that, I should also mention that that's one of the greatest challenges for conserving this animal. You have to maintain the integrity of both of those systems and the connectivity between those systems. I think most people in Vermont really value open space and open land. Open land around rivers is one of the types of habitat in Vermont that have been the most degraded and lost to wildness. So to have the, the wood turtle, a flagship species that will promote the conservation of, of riverside lands and floodplains is a really good thing and very valuable. I mean, people may not appreciate the turtle per se, but they will certainly appreciate open space next to rivers. Protecting the wood turtle means ensuring the health of its diverse habitats. And doing that means protecting the whole ecosystem of the Great Northern Forest. The Orion Society is prepared to take on this challenging endeavor. However, conservation on this scale is difficult and it's going to take a lot of work. One of the greatest challenges to keeping these remote regions in the Great Northern Forest wild is that, again, we're right on the edge uh, of some of the more developed places in the world. And because of that proximity, there's a lot of development pressure. There are a lot of people that really enjoy coming into this region to recreate. Every decade, even in a rural state like Vermont, we add the amount of development of an area the size of Burlington. Clearly, that kind of land loss, land consumption is not sustainable. Uh, and it also is not something you can continue to do and, without losing population. So unfortunately, stream sides, river valleys have been convenient places to put roads. And one of the major new predators that we've introduced to these systems, these ecosystems up here in the Northeast, is cars, cars and trucks. And there's a tremendous amount of mortality that happens as a result of cars and trucks. A lot of habitat fragmentation. So there's an incredible number of challenges for a wood turtle reaching their maximum life expectancy. So first of all, wood turtles live to be very, very old. However, now that humans have come into that equation, the chances of survival for young turtles is much, much lower. Um, you have things such as raccoons and skunks. We call subsidized predators. These are animals that are subsidized by human activities and their increased number causes almost like a hyper predation on things such as turtle nests and a lot more pressure. One of the other threats to wood turtles is collecting. So wood turtles fetch a good price on the black market for pets. Parcels have been intercepted and found to contain live turtles, including wood turtles. And they were being shipped out of state to other places because people were selling these turtles on the internet. It's at risk from casual turtle napping as people are, are you know, wandering through the woods and they see a, uh, a wood turtle and decide to pick it up, take it home, take it to school. If it doesn't get back to its original population, then it's dead to the population. It's no longer a reproductive member of that population. Well, you can run into a lot of problems if you get 2,000 feet away from a stream and you're uh, seven inch, eight inch turtle. Uh, mainly, you run into farm mowers and, you know, I, I'm still amazed that driving around Vermont where I see acres and acres of mowed lawn. Some of it might be more available to wood turtles wandering around the stream corridor. I, I think the more the public knows, the more they will care. Uh, and the trick will be how to give them 
tangible, doable things that can improve the situation for wildlife in Vermont. So what do we do in the face of these threats to the wood turtle and its ecosystem? The Orion Society is a non-profit conservation group that is focused on protecting endangered reptiles and amphibians, as well as the landscapes they inhabit. As part of this pursuit, the organization has launched the Great Northern Forest Initiative, a project built specifically to protect the wood turtle. The initiative combines three key principles, research, outreach, and conservation action. The first step is to gain accurate information, which is why the organization is putting scientists on the ground. Using a variety of techniques and technologies, scientists track the status and health of wild populations. They identify the most vital habitat areas and evaluate the effectiveness of ongoing conservation efforts. Part of this project is going to involve a lot of like landowner outreach and educating people about you know, better ways that they could be managing their properties so that they can still you know, get what they need from the land without harming the turtles or other, other wildlife as much. The owner of this property in particular is really interested in stuff like that. And he was asking me, what can I do to lessen my impact on the landscape? And in a place like this, the two simplest things would be not to mow right up to the edge of the water and uh, also just don't mow the grass straight to the ground. Raising the blades up to about eight inches still allows you to get harvest out of the fields but the mower itself, the blades aren't going to be, you know, chopping all the, all the turtles to bits and pieces. Over 80% of the Great Northern Forest is privately owned. Therefore, partnering with the landowners and building relationships within the community is critical to any conservation project in the area. Conservation does not mean that a landowner can't use the land they can coexist. Private landowners can still use their land and at the same time provide healthy habitat for a variety of species. So today we're going to be looking at the macroinvertebrates that are here in the stream, hoping that we're going to get a real diversity. Those particular bugs will tell us um, really how healthy this landscape is. The stream that I work with my students in used to have cows walking through it the cows had access to go down to the stream for water and they would just sit around on a hot summer day smack in the middle of the river. So the students now are able to see how the farmer actually set aside the land and, and put up fences to keep the cows out. When we go back into the river nowadays and we can sample, we're seeing a high level of biodiversity. I think it's incredibly refreshing that an organization with, with real backing and, and real biologists is, is going to actually focus on the wood turtle because for far too long, conservation has focused on furry, cute animals or charismatic megafauna, the majestic moose or the wolf or something like that. But the slimy, slithery, scaly, low crawly animals are just as fascinating. They have just as incredible lives. These animals are just as worthy of conservation as, as any furry, warm-blooded animal. And I'm very glad the Orion Society is, is focusing on the wood turtle. You have to get out there and establish the base of support to do the conservation work. With the landowners, with the public, with the media, uh, with the students, they've got to be aware of the species. They can't assign value to a species until they're aware of it. Understand that, uh, that, uh, that our biosphere does not revolve around this one species, this human species, and that if we're gonna survive, we gotta keep the ecosystems healthy that are supporting all these other forms of wildlife. This guy, as it grows, it grows a new scoot up under the bottom, and you get a pile of scoots. Each one, and you can see the rings. This is a strong, heavy shell. Most predators could not get through this shell, but they can chew the legs off. Well, imagine you living inside your ribcage, pulling your arms inside your ribcage, your legs up into your ribcage, and your head in. This turtle may need bigger legs for certain reasons, whether it's digging in certain substrates, swimming in fast currents. So there are, there are definitely evolutionary trade-offs. 
one of the interesting things about this turtle is it's truly more of a northern turtle. I mean, it's a turtle that goes up into Canada, only goes south to just extreme northern Virginia. And we're kind of in the heart of its range in Vermont. So as Vermonters, you have a lot of kind of regional responsibility, if you will, for making sure that this turtle continues to survive. Taking the turtle and putting it into somebody's hands can be a transformative moment. And that's why it's so critical to have partnerships with local universities, local colleges, um, and where we can give those students the opportunity to gain the knowledge and the tools they need to be the next generation standing right here in this river, making sure there's a future for wood turtles. So what is the value of conserving a turtle? Turtles have been around since before the dinosaurs. They are incredible survivors. And to think that we could so thoughtlessly wipe them out is really unconscionable. I mean, we don't need to change our ways much to just keep them going into the future as far as we can see it. And so I think for me, it's more about the intrinsic value of the diversity of life that I feel blessed to experience. Humankind has to share the landscape with the rest of the Vermonters that aren't human. Otherwise, our future is going to be diminished. And I don't know how many individual species we can lose before things do start to unravel. For the moment, the great northern forest remains wild, and the wood turtles continue to live in the streams and amongst the trees. One must do whatever they can to make sure it stays that way for future generations. <laughs>